3. Startup capital. Like any other business, you need some money to start your trading business, including money for buying a good computer and three monitors, plus sufficient capital to actually begin trading with. Many businesses, including day trading businesses, fail because the entrepreneur founders lack adequate startup capital and cannot keep tight control of their overhead costs. It will take time before you will make a living out of day trading. You need sufficient startup cash to sustain break-even operations at the beginning. Often new traders will cut back on the essentials, such as paying for the right education, tools and platform, in order to preserve their capital. They are trying to do too much with too little. This creates a death spiral of distress and emotional trading. Adequate startup capital enables new traders to make beginners mistakes and address their weaknesses early in their day trading career and before they are forced out of the trading business. The amount of capital you have available for trading is also an important component of your daily goals, especially if you desire to make a living from trading. When traders are undercapitalized but still hope to trade for a living, they are more likely to take higher risks to achieve their desired returns. That, unfortunately, will most likely destroy their account. 4. Right Tools and Services A. High-Speed Internet Service B. The Best Available Broker C. A Fast Order Execution Platform that supports hotkeys D. A scanner for finding the right stocks to trade. E. Support from a community of traders. Some of these tools must be paid for every month. Just as other businesses have monthly bills for electricity, software, licenses and leases, you have to be able to pay your internet providers monthly bills, your broker's commissions, scanner costs and trading platform fees. If you are part of a page at Truemore community, you can add the cost of that membership to this list too. Chapter 2, How Day Trading Works In this chapter 1 we'll review many of the basics of day trading and hopefully answer your questions about what day trading is and how it works. This chapter will also introduce some of the main tools and strategies that you'll come across later in this book. Of course, Tools are of no value unless you know how to properly use them. This book will be your guide in learning how to use these tools. Day Trading versus Swing Trading A compelling question to begin with is, what do you look for as a day trader? The answer is simple. First, you are looking for stocks that are moving in a relatively predictable manner. Secondly, you are going to trade them in one day. You will not keep any position overnight. If you buy stock in Apple today, for instance, you will not hold your position overnight and sell it tomorrow. If you hold onto any stock overnight, it is no longer day trading, it's called swing trading. Swing trading is a form of trading in which you hold stocks over a period of time, generally from one day to a few weeks. It is a completely different style of trading, and you shouldn't use the strategies and tools that you use for day trading to do swing trading. Do you remember Rule 2, where I mentioned that day trading is a business? Swing trading is also a business, but a completely different kind of business. The differences between swing trading and day trading are similar to the differences in owning a restaurant and owning a food delivery company. They both involve food, but they are very different, they operate with different time frames, regulations, market segments and revenue models. You should not confuse day trading with other styles of trading just because the trading involves stocks. Day traders always close their positions before the market closes. Many traders, including myself, do both day trading and swing trading. We are aware that we are running two different businesses, and we have gone through separate educational programs for these two kinds of trading. One of the key differences between day trading and swing trading is the approach to stock picking. I do not swing trade and day trade the same stocks. Swing traders usually look for stocks in solid companies that they know won't lose their entire value overnight. For day trading, however, you can trade anything, including companies that will soon go bankrupt. 
because you don't care what happens after the market closes. In fact, many of the companies that you will day trade are too risky to hold overnight because they might lose much of their value in that short of a period of time. You have now reached Rule 3 of Day Trading. Rule 3, Day Traders do not hold positions overnight. If necessary, you must sell with a loss to make sure you do not hold onto any stock overnight. Several traders over the years have emailed me about this rule and wondered why I advise them to close their position at the end of the day, even with the loss. Of course I do not want you to lose money. But I often see traders suddenly change their plan at the end of the day because they do not want to accept a small loss. They should get out of a losing trade, but they instead suddenly decide to stay in the trade and hold it overnight, in the hope that perhaps the stock will come back the next day. I myself have turned some of my day trades into swing trades, and I paid a heavy price for that. Often, many of the stocks we day trade will lose even more of their value overnight. As a day trader, you must stick to your daily plans. You should never change a day trade that was supposed to close at the end of the day into a swing trade. It's a common human inclination to accept profits quickly and to also want to wait until losing trades return to even. It's also very important to remember that trading is different from investing. My friends will often ask me, Andrew, you are a trader, can you teach me how to trade too? When I sit down with them and listen to their expectations, I realize that most of them want to invest their money, they are not looking for a new or additional career as a trader. They actually want to invest their money themselves rather than settle for the gains that typical mutual funds offer. They are not looking to become a trader. They don't realize the differences and are incorrectly using the words investing and trading interchangeably. Most of them have some money saved in their savings or retirement accounts and would like to grow that investment at a faster rate than what mutual funds or other managed investment services offer. I patiently explain to them the differences between a trader and an investor to ensure they are clear about a trading career. Of course, most of them are not ready to become a trader. I am also often asked to give my opinion on the market or on a specific stock. For example, my friends and family will quite often ask me, Andrew, do you see the market up or down from here until the end of the year? Or Apple is selling off, is it a good buy now? Do you think it will go higher? My answer is, I have no idea. I am a trader. I am not an investor. I do not study long-term trends, nor am I trained as an investor. I have never developed a long-term investing strategy. I am not sure where the overall market is headed in six months, or where for that matter Apple will trade even tomorrow. My business is called trading, not investing. I do not care where Apple will trade in two years. I personally wish that they will trade higher, but, as a trader, my personal wishes are irrelevant. If I Apple is that day a stock in play and weak, I am shorting it. If I Apple is strong, I am long. I'll explain short and long in the next section. As a day trader, I am trained for short term into day trading, nothing more. I am only interested in what stocks will move the most today. How I can make money today is my obsession and my expertise. As a swing trader, I have some understanding of the overall market situation, if it is bullish, bearish or neutral, but that is because I am personally a swing trader too. You as a stock market day trader will not necessarily need to know about the market direction in the near future. You are a day trader, your time span is measured in seconds and minutes, rarely in hours, and certainly not in days or weeks or months. Buying long, selling short. Day traders buy stocks in the hope that their price will go higher. This is called buying long, or simply long. When you hear me or a fellow trader say, I am long 100 shares of Apple, it means that we have bought 100 shares of Apple Inc. and would like to sell them higher for a profit. Going long is good when the price is expected to go higher. But what if prices are dropping? In that case, you can sell short and still make a profit. 
Day traders can borrow shares from their broker and sell them, hoping that the price will go lower and that they can then buy those shares back at a lower price and make a profit. This is called selling short, or simply short. When people say, I am short Apple, it means they have sold short stocks of Apple and they hope that the price of Apple will drop. When the price is going lower, you owe 100 shares to your broker, it probably shows us minus 100 shares in your account, which means you must return 100 shares of Apple to your broker. Your broker doesn't want your money. They want their shares back. So, if the price has gone lower, you can buy them cheaper than when you sold them earlier and make a profit. Imagine that you borrow 100 shares of Apple from your broker and sell them at $100 per share. Apple's price then drops to $90, so you buy back those 100 shares at $90 and return them to your broker. You have made $10 per share or $1,000. What if the price of Apple goes up to $110? In that case, you still have to buy 100 shares to return to your broker because you owe your broker shares and not money. Therefore, you have to buy 100 shares at $110 in order to return 100 shares to your broker. In that case, you will have lost $1,000. Short sellers profit when the price of the stock they borrowed and sold drops. Short selling is important because stock prices usually drop much more quickly than they go up. Fear is a more powerful feeling than greed. Therefore, short sellers, if they trade right, can make astonishing profits while other traders panic and start to sell off. However, like anything in the market that has great potential, short selling has its risks too. When buying stocks of a company for $5, the worst case scenario is that the company goes bankrupt and you lose your $5 per share. There is a limit to your loss. But if you short sell that company at $5 and then the price, instead of going down, starts going higher and higher, then there won't be any limit to your loss. The price may go to $10, $20, or $100, and still there will be no limit to your loss. Your broker wants those shares back. Not only can you lose all of the money in your account, but your broker can also sue you for more money if you do not have sufficient funds to cover your shorts. Short selling is a legal activity for several good reasons. First, it provides the markets with more information. Short sellers often complete extensive and legitimate due diligence to discover facts and flaws that support their suspicion that the target company is overvalued. If there were no short sellers, the price of stocks could unreasonably increase higher and higher. Short sellers are balancing the market and adjusting prices to their reasonable value. Their actions are conducive to the health of the market. If the price is going to go lower, you may correctly ask, why does your broker allow you to short sell instead of selling stock themselves before the price drops? The answer is that your broker prefers to hold their position for the long term. Short selling provides investors who own the stock with the ability to generate extra income by lending their shares to the short sellers. Long term investors who make their shares available for short selling are not afraid of short term ups and downs. They have invested in the company for a good reason, and they have no interest in selling their shares in a short period of time. They therefore prefer to lend their shares to traders who wish to make a profit from short-term fluctuations of the market. In exchange for lending their shares, they will charge interest. Therefore, by short selling, you will need to pay some interest to your broker as the cost of borrowing those shares. If you short sell only during the same day, you usually will not need to pay any interest. Swing traders who sell short usually have to pay daily interest on their short stocks. Short selling is generally a dangerous practice in trading. Some traders are long biased. They only buy stocks in the hope of selling them higher. I don't have any bias. I will short sell when I think the setup is ready, and I will buy whenever it fits my strategy. Having said that, I am more careful when I short stocks. Some strategies that I explain in Chapter 7 work only for long positions.
Some strategies work only for short selling and others will work in both long and short positions depending on the setup. I explain these positions in detail in Chapter 7. Retail versus Institutional Traders Individual traders, like you and I, are called retail traders. We can be part-time traders, or full-time traders, but we're not working for a firm and we're not managing other people's money. We retail traders are a small percentage of the volume in the market. On the other hand, there are the so-called institutional traders such as Wall Street investment banks, proprietary trading firms, mutual funds and hedge funds. Most of their trading is based on sophisticated computer algorithms and high-frequency trading. Rarely is any human involved in the day trading operations of these large accounts. Through whatever means, institutional traders have considerable money behind them and they can be very aggressive. You may correctly ask, how can an individual trader, like you and me, coming later to the game, compete against institutional traders and win? Notwithstanding that fact, individual traders have a tremendous advantage over institutional traders. Banks and other institutions are compelled to trade, often in large volumes, and sometimes with little regard to price. They are expected to be constantly active in the market. Individual traders, on the other hand, can decide whether or not they want to trade, and they can buy their time until opportunities present themselves. Ironically, large numbers of individual traders miss out on their advantage by overtrading. Instead of being patient and exercising the self-discipline of winners, they succumb to greed, trade unwisely and unnecessarily, and become losers. I always use the analogy of retail day trading and guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare is an irregular approach to warfare in which a small group of combatants such as paramilitary personnel or armed civilians, use hit and run tactics, such as ambushes, sabotage, raids and petty warfare, to maneuver around a larger and less mobile traditional military force. The United States military is considered to be one of the most formidable fighting forces in the world. However, they suffered significantly as a result of jungle warfare tactics used against them in North Vietnam. Earlier examples include the European resistance movements which fought against Nazi Germany during World War II. In guerrilla trading, as the term suggests, you are in hiding, waiting for an opportunity to move in and out of the financial jungle in a short period of time to generate quick profits while keeping your risk to a minimum. You don't want to defeat or outsmart investment banks. You're simply waiting for an opportunity to reach your daily profit target. As a retail day trader, you have another distinct advantage over institutional traders in that you can exit your losing positions quickly. As I will discuss later, you must determine your exit plan if a stock trades against you. A new trader should start with trading one standard lot, 100 shares. 100 shares is low risk. And although it's also a low reward for the trader, you need to start somewhere. New traders should start out with trading 100 shares. If their stop loss hits, they really have no excuse about why they couldn't get out. Even for an illiquid stock that is traded with very low volume, 100 shares is nothing. Institutional traders, on the other hand, may have a 1 million share position with which to work. It takes some time to unravel such a large position, not one click of a mouse, and losses can be significant. Day traders trade with much smaller size and can get out of their losing trade for a very small loss. In fact, a good day trader can take numerous losses of as little as one penny. So you must learn to exploit one of your huge advantages. And this means stopping out a stock when it trades against your exit price. As a retail day trader, you profit from volatility in the market. If the markets are flat, you are not going to make any money. Only high-frequency traders make money under these circumstances. Therefore, you need to find stocks that will make quick moves to the upside or to the downside in a relatively predictable manner. 
Institutional traders, on the other hand, are trading with very high frequency and will profit from very small movements of price, or as it is sometimes called, from choppy price action. It is extremely important to stay away from stocks that are being heavily traded by institutional traders. As an individual retail day trader, you must stick to your retail trading territory. You will not trade stocks that other retail traders are not trading or not seeing. The strength of retail day trading strategies is that other retail traders are also using them. The more traders using these strategies, the better they will work. As more people recognize the line in the sand, more people will be buying at that point. This, of course, means the stock will move up faster. The more buyers, the quicker it will move. This is why many traders are happy to share their day trading strategies. It not only helps other traders to become more profitable, but it also increases the number of traders who are using these strategies. There is no benefit in hiding these methods or keeping them secret. High Frequency Trading As I mentioned just a few pages ago, most of the Wall Street investment banks, mutual funds, prop firms, and hedge funds base their trading on sophisticated computer algorithms and high frequency trading. You may have heard about the mysterious black box, the top secret hidden computer programs, formulas and systems that manipulate the stock market. Some will say that since you can't beat a computer or the high frequency trading, why even bother trying? To me, this is simply an excuse for not doing well and not working hard enough. I and many other successful day traders have beat the black box and have profited very nicely in the process. In all honesty, yes, HFT has made trading more difficult and complicated for the individual day trader. It can frustrate you, stress you out. Some of these programs are deliberately designed to go after and beat us day traders. The best way to overcome them is to be very selective in when you make a trade and to monitor the price action very, very closely. Be that guerrilla trader. Find a stock in play. Find the moments when the computer formulas and algorithms cannot take your money. Find your entry point. Make your move. Make your exit. Take your profit. I believe one of the most significant challenges with these black boxes is that the computer programmers who work so many hours each day on the formulas don't have a clue how to day trade themselves. Past market data is very valuable for both you and for their computers, but the stock market is not 100% predictable. It is always changing. There is an uncertainty about it that no computer programmer can fully prepare for in advance.